What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new ARM-based keyboard computer. I guess that's what they're calling these things and it might look a bit familiar to you, but we can't get this confused with the Raspberry Pi 400 because this is not from the Pi Foundation. This is actually known as the Pi 800 from Orange Pi, otherwise known as the Orange Pi 800. And basically what we have here is a full Linux or Android PC built into a keyboard and it does offer more power than the Pi 400. And yeah, they definitely took a lot of design cues from the Pi 400, but it's really hard to improve upon that 400 design. It's definitely one of the best little ARM-based keyboard computers on the market right now, and it was really only a matter of time before we got more of these all-in-one ARM-based PCs. And like I mentioned, this little PC runs Linux or Android, but at the time of making this video, they don't have the Android image available. They do have the source code uploaded. So I will be making another video with the Pi 800 running Android, definitely stay tuned to the channel, but for now we're going to be running Ubuntu, it's the stock operating system that came pre-installed on this unit. And when I say pre-installed, this actually comes with 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in, or you could boot from a micro SD card. So this is coming in a bit taller than the Pi 400, but not by much. We will do a comparison in a second, but I did want to give you a look at what comes inside of the box. And basically what you're going to get here is the Pi 800, a 5 volt, 4 amp USB type C power supply and a user manual. That's about it. But we do have an operating system already installed on this and we can boot it up. Real quick, I just wanted to give you a comparison here. At the top, we've got the Raspberry Pi 400 on the bottom, the Orange Pi 800. As you can see, they look very, very similar, but that Pi 800 is coming in just a bit taller than the Pi 400. And if we take a look around back, we do have a different I.O. setup. Now, they opted to use full-size HDMI, which I'm really happy to see. And this also has a built-in speaker. It's a mono speaker, but it will get you by if you're just connected to a display that doesn't have any sound out. As you can see, we've got the dedicated Orange Pi key, kind of like the Pi 400's Pi key. We've also got three LED indicators up top, some non-slip feet on the bottom so it's not going to move around on your desk. And moving around to the back, from the left to the right, we've got that mono speaker, USB Type-C. We've also got our 40-pin GPIO layout here, just like the Raspberry Pi. 3.5 millimeter audio out. It also has a VGA port, full-size HDMI, micro SD card, gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, and a single USB 2.0 port. They've also integrated a microphone up top here, and yes, you can unplug this if you just go ahead and pull this thing apart. We will take a look at the internals in a second, but I want to go over the specs real quick, because uh, when it comes down to it for $99, we're not looking at a bad setup here. When it comes to the specs of the Pi 800, for the CPU, they opted to use the RK3399. Now, we've seen this in a lot of different single board computers, and there's a lot of operating systems that are really optimized for this chip here. Not the most powerful, but it is putting out better performance than the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU can. This is a 6-core, 64-bit ARM CPU. We've got two A72 cores up to 1.8 GHz and four A53 cores up to 1.4. For the GPU, it's using the ARM Mali T860 MP4. We've got 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now this is soldered to the board, but we can always use a micro SD card to boot our operating system from if you want. Gigabit Ethernet, 802.11bgn and AC Wi-Fi, so we do have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi here. Bluetooth 5.0. And if we take a look at the download section on their website, we've got an Ubuntu image, Debian, Manjaro, and the Android source code. So Android will be coming, but keep in mind, since this is using the RK3399, there are tons of operating systems out there that really just kind of need to be tweaked a little bit to run on this. Like ArmBN, which is an awesome desktop operating system, or if you're into retro gaming, Botocera might even boot on this like it sits. And as soon as the Android image is available, I will be doing another video on this. The Pi 800 is passively cooled, just like the Raspberry Pi 4, so we don't have any moving parts inside of here. And to get inside, it's actually pretty easy, you just need to pry the keyboard section off. We've got the microphone cable and the keyboard cable that needs to be unplugged from the main board. But as you can see, they've got a massive piece of metal in here to keep that RK3399 nice and chilly. And right up here, we've got that mono speaker. So obviously, the way this thing's set up, it's a custom board designed specifically for the Pi 800. They didn't just throw a single board computer inside of kind of a keyboard case here. This does support a real-time clock, and we've already got our cell installed, our RTC battery right here. There's our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. We've got our antenna coming over to the left-hand side. 
our RAM and CPU, and we've also got that 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. All of this is cooled by that large metal plate inside. So yeah, I'm actually really excited to test this out, and at first I wasn't sure if we already had an operating system installed, but uh, sure enough, as soon as I booted it up, we're running Ubuntu 22.04. This is their image. Orange Pie OS should be coming soon for this, along with Android, but right now we're just going to take a look at the stock operating system. I would also love to test out Manjaro. If the interest is there, let me know in the comments below. Alright, so I've had this up and running for a little while now, and I've tested out the built-in speaker. Obviously, it's mono sound. It doesn't get that loud, but you know, if you're sitting in front of this thing, you could use it as your speaker. Not the best in the world, but we do have it just in case. I know it's a bit hard to see the screen like this, so I'm actually going to go ahead and plug into my game capture device. This uh, stock orange wallpaper that they have here is just blowing everything out. So I'll go ahead and get everything situated, then we'll jump right into some testing. Alright, so I think we'll be able to see this a bit better. That orange just really does blow everything out. As you can see, we're on Ubuntu 22.04. This is LTS. Kernel 5.18. We're at 1080p right now. We've got that 4 gigabytes of RAM on that RK3399. And our system storage here, if we take a look, we can get a better look at it. Free space. 49 gigs. This has 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in, and you know, it's actually pretty snappy. It's definitely a lot faster than a micro SD card would be. When it comes to pre installed applications, there was a lot of stuff in here. Basically, the only thing I installed was RetroArch. I also installed Redream, and one that I really wanted to test, which I wasn't sure if it was going to run well and I just can't get it to boot, was PS2 using EtherSX2. Not exactly sure why I can't get it to start up. It might just be the operating system. So if I move over to something else later on down the road, we might be able to test it there. These orange pies do have orange pie config built in, kind of like raspi config for the raspberry pi. So if we find it from here, open it up. You can see we've got a few different options like software. We can uninstall and reinstall software from here, but you could always do it through terminal if you want to. Another one here was system which does allow us to change the governor and the speed of the CPU. Right now it's set on on-demand and we've got it at 1.8, so the max clock on this RK3399, and performance isn't bad at all in this operating system. And when it comes down to it, yes, we do have GPIO pins on this board. We can control them from the operating system. But what I think they were trying to do with the Pi 800 instead of one of their single board computers is kind of create a nice little desktop experience. And with this, you know, web browsing, email checking, photo and document editing would be possible on something like this. And I kind of want to test some of that stuff out. So first up, let's check out some web browsing and some video playback. So I'm using Firefox here. So if we head over to the Orange Pie website, from here, you'll see everything loads up pretty quickly. And I am on my five gigahertz network, so we can check out a little more information about the Orange Pie 800 here. And yeah, I mean, we're not loading up a super large page here, but this kind of gives you an idea of how quick it is. It does handle web browsing really well. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at was some video playback from YouTube. And for this, I'm actually going to be using the Chromium browser. And just like in the past with the RK3399 in Ubuntu, basically every kind of operating system that I've tested except for Android does struggle with video streaming on the RK3399. But when this chip was released, it was touted that this could run 4K 60fps video without any issues, and it is true while I'm running Android. I can actually get some really good 4K performance out of it with Android, but every Linux operating system that I've ever tested has struggled with either Firefox or Chromium. Now it will do native 4K video playback, whether you want to run it from an external drive or the internal eMMC, and it does handle that really well, but trying to stream from YouTube has always given me issues with this chip here. Next thing I wanted to show you here was a little bit of photo editing, and uh, yeah, this RK3399 does work out pretty well for it. I wouldn't pick this up for professional photo editing, but you know, if you needed to touch up a few photos here and there, you could definitely get it done. Go ahead and open up a picture that I downloaded here. So yeah, just a quick, really rough edit here, but as you can see, I mean, photo editing is possible with GIMP on the Pi 800. 
And before I wrap this first look video up, I did want to test out a little bit of emulation here in Ubuntu. So I was able to get ReDream up and running. So we've got a standalone Dreamcast emulator. I was also able to install RetroArch, but like I mentioned, I couldn't get EtherSX2 up and running. And when it comes to PSP emulation, I was running into a lot of issues with Ubuntu, but you know, I've tested this chip in the past on several different single board computers, and to tell you the truth, I've always gotten better emulation performance out of Android, so when we move over to that operating system, I'll test that a lot more. But in this one, we can at least test, let's say, some Game Boy Advance, some PlayStation 1, and some Dreamcast. But when it comes to the lower end stuff in Ubuntu, you're not going to have any issues with it. You want to do some Game Boy, some GBA, some NES, SNES, Neo Geo, CPS 1, 2, 3. I've never really noticed a difference between Ubuntu and Android when it comes to this type of emulation. But for the higher end stuff, I really have. I mean, really, anything past Dreamcast, I've just always gotten much better performance in Android. But uh, here's PlayStation 1. We've got Tekken 3 running here really well using RetroArch. We're at full speed. You're not going to have an issue with this. And the final one I wanted to test here was some Dreamcast using that standalone ReDream emulator. And if you did want to run this specific emulator on your ARM-based single board computer, you can head over to the ReDream website and just download the Raspberry Pi version. It was originally designed for the Pi, but if you've got an ARM-based single board computer or another system with a 64-bit Linux operating system, then there's a really good chance that it's just going to boot up and run without having to mess around with anything. And as you can see, the Pi 800 does handle Dreamcast really well in Ubuntu. Overall, I'm really happy to see something like this come to the market, and I really do hope we see more of these with better CPUs down the road. Now, this is using that RK3399, which, you know, in real-world performance isn't the most powerful in the world, but for certain tasks, it does outperform the Raspberry Pi 4's Broadcom CPU right now. And at $99, this might make sense to some people. And if you do a little bit of research, you'll see that there are a ton of operating systems in development right now for the 3399. Some are very far in development, some are just starting out, and there's a good chance that a lot of those operating systems might just boot right up on this from a micro SD card. I mean, and if not, it would just take a little bit of configuration to get it up and running on the Pi 800. So I still have a lot of testing that I want to do with this device, and I have a few operating systems in mind, but one that I'm really excited about is Android and Bado Sera. So definitely keep an eye out on the channel. I will be making a couple more videos on this. We've got a lot of content to cover with it. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Orange Pi 800, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.